Indeed, Jesus is the king of our hearts. And so worshiping him as king, we're subjects to our king. And so it's our honor and pleasure to serve him every day of our lives. Would you bow your heart with me, please? Father, today, as I open up sacred scripture, I ask that you would just open your hearts wide to us, that as I teach, the power of the Holy Spirit flows through the words and grips each heart to bring transformation so that we will indeed be effective servants of the Most High God. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Are you ready for the word? Are you really ready? Here's what I'm going to ask you to do as you click open to Matthew 13. I'm going to ask that you would, for the next 30 minutes, give me your undivided attention. No multitasking, but just leaning in and listening to the word of the Lord. I want to talk with you today about it's planting time. The Bible is very clear on how seasons and principles are timeless. In fact, from the very beginning in Genesis 8 verse 22, we learn, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. What that verse is telling us is this, that there is this timeless principle that works for everybody, everywhere, and at every time. This principle works even during the pandemic that we're all experiencing. The principle could be summed up in a few words. It's this, after planting whatever kind of seed, you can expect a harvest of the same. We also recognize that you reap what you sow. Job tells us that in Job 4 verse 8. Job says, my experience shows that those who plant trouble and cultivate evil will harvest the same. <laughs> it's so simple what he's saying. You reap what you sow. I remember as a boy, I was living in Queens, New York with my family. And it was my turn, because I have two brothers, it was my turn to mow the lawn. So I'm mowing the lawn, I'm about 10, 12 years old. And outside of our yard, and our yard was fenced in on three sides, outside of our yard, there was this marshy, woody land. And I looked out as I was mowing the lawn, and I see this big stray dog. So as a mischievous little boy, I picked up this stone, I just threw it at the dog, and I just kept on mowing the lawn. You ever have the feeling that someone's watching you? I stopped mowing, I looked around, the big dog was standing right behind me. All of a sudden, I started speaking dog. I said, I'm sorry. I mean, the dog was right there. Job was right. If you sow trouble, you'll reap trouble. That dog was there to say it's payday. The principle of sowing and reaping is not just germane to the Old Testament. It's also part of the New Testament narrative. Paul says in Galatians 6 and verse 7, Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. If they plant to satisfy their sinful selves, their sinful selves will bring them ruin. But if they plant to please the Spirit, they will, re they will receive eternal life from the Spirit. In other words, the timeless principle is applicable to you and me. You reap what you sow. That also tells me next year's harvest is based upon this year's seed. Would you repeat that after me, please? My next year's harvest is based upon this year's seed. You got it. Now let's go into Matthew's gospel, Matthew 13 and verse 3. Jesus is teaching and he says, then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. 
Verse 6. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, which had produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Let's stop. Picture with me, if you would, a huge crowd listening to Jesus. The verses 1 and 2 read that he sat in a boat, and so they were standing on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Here's Jesus in a boat, and he's teaching. And one of the things we learn is this. If you live close to the land, the farm, an agrarian society, you understand the importance of season. Many of us, we're so far removed from the country, from the farm, from the land, we don't even think about seasons and principles like sowing and reaping. But the first century people did. I ask myself this question. Since it's planting time, what must I be mindful of? Here's the answer. Pay attention to the season. See, we're all guilty of mindlessly thinking, saying, or acting in ways without considering the harvest that our words, our actions, our thoughts will reap. Remember, you reap what you sow. Our seeds become our words, our thoughts, our actions. And if we're not mindful, we're sowing all the time, unconscious of what we're going to reap. But I want us to lean into Scripture and recognize what Jesus is telling us is pay attention to the season. Although the farmer in this parable is not the central figure in the story, the farmer is acutely aware of the season in which he's in. And so the Scripture is teaching us things. Palestinian farmers recognize that the cycle of sowing and reaping, planting and harvesting, they recognize that cycle. And so June was the harvest season for Palestinian farmers. After they harvested their crops, they would let the land stay bare, untouched until November or December, because those last two months of our calendar year, November, December, in their time frame, those were the months to plant. And so the parable that Jesus is bringing out is this. We got to pay attention to the season so we'll know when it's planting time. And so I want us to know that in this principle, when we think about planting outside of the farming context, but just in life, since our words, our thoughts, and our actions are seeds, it's always planting season. In fact, Jesus underscored that when he told us in Luke 6, verse 38, these words, give to other people and God will give to you. He will give to you even more than you gave. He will fill your pocket until no more will go in. It will be so full that it will come out over the top. Think about how you give to other people. God will give in the same way to you. Jesus is making it so plain that it's always planting season when, you, when your seeds are your words, your thoughts, your actions. Whether you're conscious of it or you're totally unconscious, unaware, Jesus is telling us you're always planting. I remember many years ago, I'm sitting in my office and the mail came. My assistant brought the mail to my desk and I saw the letter and it was from a minister friend of mine that I was very concerned about his actions and behaviors and so I'm wondering, what does he want to tell me? So I opened the letter and there was just a little note and the note simply said, David, thinking of you, that was it. And in it, there was a check for $500. I'm saying, well, that's odd. Why is he giving me $500? In about 10 minutes, my phone rang. It was another person, a friend of mine, another minister. He said, David, did you get a check from Fred? He said, I got a check for $500 from Fred. I said, I got a check from $500 from Fred too. And then we talked 
what's he trying to pull? Why is he giving us this $500? And we concluded he's working the word. Somehow he must have a need and he's planting a seed. So regardless of how we felt about his actions and behavior, he knew the word. That is as, it's, it's what the noted author Jim Rowan once said. If you don't like what you're reaping, you had better change what you have been sowing. And so what we recognize is this. It's always planting season. When it comes to life, it's always planting season. I heard the story about this dad who was a farmer and he had a little boy. Little Johnny was about 10 years old and he told Johnny, he said, Johnny, don't go into the watermelon patch. The watermelon are not ripe. Don't eat it. Then the father went to the town to run some errands. And you know what Johnny did. And Johnny goes into the watermelon patch. He's looking around. He sees this small watermelon and he knows that that particular watermelon is ripe. And he hit it against a rock broke the watermelon open and started just chomping at it, eating at it. And then to cover up his crime of disobedience, he hides the rinds and the seeds and covers it up with, with dirt and then goes about his business. A couple of weeks later, his dad was walking through the watermelon to see the watermelon patch to see how things are going. And right outside of the fenced area, he noticed these little sprouts of watermelon popping up in, out of the ground. And so he digs around it and he sees the rinds and he knows exactly what his son has done. See, little Johnny forgot that it's planting season and seeds have life. I want you to know, if you don't like what you're reaping right now in your life, you need to start planting seeds towards that. You want more friends? Be friendly. You want greater encouragement? Be an encourager. You want God to bless you financially? Plant a seed that's financial. In other words, it's always planting season. Let's go back to the text. And look with me at verse 18. And Jesus is now explaining the meaning of the parable. He says, Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. Verse 21. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. I love how Jesus is so good at explaining the meaning of the parable of the sower. Let's ask ourselves a question. Since it's planting time, what should we be mindful of? Pay attention to the soil. Jesus' parable depicted four types of soil. In other words, four types of, of listeners, hearers. And I suspect those four type of hearers are part of my audience right now. You are one of those types of hearers. Let's dig deep to understand what these hearers are. Because if you learn to hear God's word with knowledge and understanding and the ability where you're leaning towards obedience to the truth of Scripture, the fruitful result, it's amazing. And so we recognize that one type of hearer is the path. The path is hardened ground created by people because they want to get to their destination and take a shortcut. And because they keep stomping on the ground, not intentionally, but unintentionally, the repeated use 
the ground gets hard. Jesus says that represents someone who lacks understanding of what they heard. And so I want you to recognize how you need to understand the truth of Scripture. The second type of soil, a rocky soil. The rocky soil speaks of hearers who they suddenly have joy when they hear the word. They hear, man, you reap what you sow. And they think, I got to sow. But what they have not done is to clear the soil of rocks, impediments that get in the way in terms of their lifestyle. Third type of soil, thorny soil. That represents someone who hears the word, but they are so worried about trials and crisis and they're deceived by the trickiness of wealth that they are not able to be fruitful. Then we find there's a fourth kind of soil, the good soil. The good soil, it represents someone who hears the word, understands the word, applies the word, and Jesus says that person will receive 30, 60, or 100-fold return and harvest from the seeds that they've planted. Imagine you reaping a 100-fold return with friendship by you being friendly. A 100-fold return with encouragement by you learning to encourage others. A 100-fold return by you sowing financial seeds towards the work of the Lord. You will see a great harvest in your own life. My prayer is that you will be a good soil in terms of the type of hearers that you are. I want you to see that when you look at these four kinds of soil, the three particularly, the one that's the path, the rocky soil, and the thorny soil, there's something common in all three, and that is all three are distracted. The hardened soil distracted, not listening, not understanding. The rocky soil distracted, not cleaning up their lives, lack of discipline. The thorny soil distracted, focusing on trials and riches, which is just career path and never thinking about spiritual life and nurturing that. All three are distracted. One thing I've learned is this, distracted listeners and distracted hearers are never fruitful. One of the things our church has done for decades is offer premarital counseling for couples that are engaged. But we always tell them, do not come to the premarital counseling course unless your wedding date is at least six months away. What we've learned over years is this. If engaged couples are listening to lessons that can help them have healthy marriages and they're within weeks or months of getting married, they're not hearing us. They're only thinking about their wedding date. And so we have rules in place to safeguard their heart by saying, listen, and so make sure you can't listen if you're, if you're distracted. So when we say listen, we've helped them by making sure premarital counseling is at least six months away from their wedding date. I want you to recognize what Jesus is telling us by depicting the four types of hearers is this, pay attention to the soil. And that means we got to clean the soil, and the soil is our hearts. Hosea 10 verse 12 says, I said, this is the Lord speaking through the prophet Hosea, I said, plant the good seeds of righteousness, and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts, for now is the time to seek the Lord, that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. See, the soil that Jesus is talking about, whether it's the, the path, the rocky soil, the thorny soil, or even the good soil, the soil represents our heart. And so the Lord is telling us, before you can plant, you got to prepare the soil of your heart. And so soil needs preparation. And so you're tilling the heart, you're tilling the ground, you're making that ground you know, friable, which is you're making it where you can just break up the dirt in your hand. If your soil has rocks in there, bitterness, anger, resentment, unresolved conflicts, may I suggest to you that if you want to have a fertile heart that's rich in nutrients so that when you plant seeds, regardless of what those seeds are, that you want to reap a harvest of the same, first Prepare your heart. 
And sometimes those rocks are in our hearts, a bad attitude, an incorrect perspective, some flawed view that must be removed. And when those thorns or rocks are removed from the soils of our heart, it is amazing how rich our hearts become. Sometimes the rocks that are in our hearts is fear. And we got to remove that fear or an incorrect perspective that God can't provide for us. You got to take that rock out of your heart. Have you ever heard the story about 57 cents? Many, many years ago, in the city of Philadelphia, a little girl was going to Sunday school, and when she got there, they said to her, I'm sorry, sweetheart, we can't let you in. We don't have any more room. We need a bigger Sunday school, and so we don't have any space for you. She cried, and she returned home. And that little girl vowed that she was going to help pay for the building of a larger Sunday school space. She started putting together her pennies and she had collected 57 cents over time. And it took her about two years to amass that. And she had gotten ill and then eventually passed away. And when her parents went through her room and through her belongings, they found the 57 cents and a little note attached to it. This is my my piggy bank that I'm saving up money for a new Sunday school room. The pastor got a hold of it, made mention to it. The newspapers got a hold of it, and they blew up the story. And out of that came this big heart of philanthropy from Philadelphians and others from around the country, and they started to invest in this church, building a bigger space. And would you believe today what you have is not only a 3,000-seat sanctuary in the heart of Philadelphia, but you have Temple University and Temple Hospital. All that came out of 57 cents. What am I saying to you? You have to pay attention to the soil of your heart. And when that little girl took out of her heart discouragement and started to trust God, God did amazing things through her. What we've learned already is this. We must pay attention to the season and we must pay attention to the soil. I want to take you back now to Matthew 13, this time verse 23. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. What am I experiencing from this story? What I'm hearing is this, I must pay attention to the harvest. Jesus was so matter of fact, there was no equivocation. He, he didn't vacillate, he didn't stammer, he didn't sit there spellbound as to how do I end this parable, what do I do? He simply stood there, you know, or I should say sat there in the boat and just communicated, you reap what you sow. And you should expect a great harvest. Harvest time is coming and planting removes the guesswork. That's what Jesus was saying. And so there should be no sense of uncertainty in your mind. No sense of this big question mark in your head. If you've planted, expect to reap a harvest. If you've sown, expect to reap a harvest. If you have tilled the ground, prepared the soil, recognizing the season, recognizing the power of the seed, plant the seed and expect to receive a great harvest in your life. Paul tells us the same thing in Galatians 6 and verse 9. The apostle says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Do you hear that? Paul says you just have to be patient. If you've sown the principle of sowing and reaping is applicable to everybody, everywhere, every time. God's divine principles of sowing and reaping is just as guaranteed as the principle of gravity or the law of buoyancy. The law of sowing and reaping is just as continuous and just as even-handed in how it works for everyone, everywhere, every time. I wonder 
what kind of harvest you'll reap if you planted a generous seed towards that harvest. Remember, next year's harvest is based on this year's seed. Our ministry is looking to launch two new campuses at the top of 2022. One's going to be in the Poconos, that's Pennsylvania, East Stroudsburg area to be specific. And the other is going to be in Clifton, in Passaic County, about 20 minutes from our Montclair campus. Pastor Chris and Kelly Lewis will be the campus pastors in the Poconos. So I want you to know God has a great plan for the Poconos. Pastor Ryan and Kristen Faison will be the campus pastors in Clifton. We have staff members that actually live in the Poconos, and we have congregants that have to actually drive 40 minutes from the Poconos to our Rockaway campus, and so we have individuals that's going to be part of that core team. And so when we launch a campus in the Poconos, it's going to be for soul winning in that community. I believe that God's given our ministry a certain distinctiveness, a certain sound in worship, a certain sound in, in preaching that's relevant to the culture, and God has great things in store. When it comes to the Clifton location, we're going to be meeting at the AMC Theater just to start off. We're not buying it. We're just renting space there on a Sunday morning. And what we recognize, even though it's 20 minutes from, from Montclair, it's a totally different community. It's 22 minutes exactly. And it's a totally different community with different needs. And so we believe that when we held back bringing the 11th, the 1.30 p.m. service back to Montclair on Sundays, and we held off right now for this period of time, the Saturday night service in Montclair, our goal was to say, let's launch this campus and let's trust that we can reach people in the, in the Bergen and Passaic County more than we've ever done to reach them for Christ because Clifton is in Passaic County. And so we want you to pray with us and pray for us. And I want you to recognize that a great harvest is coming and I trust God that he'll do mighty things beginning in January of 2022 with these two respective campuses. Now, in a few weeks, I'm going to be standing in front of you, and I'm going to ask you to sow a generous seed towards the ministry of Christ Church. On a practical level, the seed will go towards supporting and underwriting the cost for these two new campuses. On a spiritual level, it'll go towards your next year's harvest. Remember, the seed you sow this year will generate harvest for next year. Practically, you're helping the church win souls through the launching of two new campuses. Spiritually, you're helping yourself reap a great harvest in 2022 and beyond. So I want you to see the benefit. Let me ask you a question. Dream with me for a moment. What would happen if we received a million dollar seed? It's doable if everybody gave a generous seed. I want you to start praying, considering it, and I'll talk with you more about it in the coming weeks, but I want to be so excited, and, and I, in fact, not want to be, I'm very excited, and I pray that you share that excitement because launching new, two new campuses, it means more souls coming into the kingdom of God. We also will need launch teams. If you live in the Poconos area, or you have family there, or you live in the Clifton area, why not consider being a part of our launch team? A launch team are not spectators. These individuals are talented men and women that want to serve in various capacities. I want you to pull out your smartphone, even if you're watching in this on your television, open up your camera app, Scan that QR code and it'll bring you to ChristChurchUSA.org backslash campus launch. And there you'll get a chance to say, I want to sign up to help serve, whether it's in the Poconos area, I didn't say vacation, serve in the Poconos area or in the Clifton area. I didn't say go and watch movies at the AMC. I said go and serve and be a part of our team. We will train you and get you ready so you'll be effective. What am I saying? What I'm saying to you is this, when you sow based on faith, you should expect a great harvest in the future. 
We serve an awesome God who has great things in store, not only for you, but also for our church, and not only for our church, but for these regions that we believe God is assigning us to have spiritual care and responsibility over. Join us as we go on this journey of learning what it means to be sowers who reap great harvest. Would you bow your heart with me, please? Let me pray with you. Father, we're so thankful for your word. I pray that you would add to our lives the launch teams that we need for both new campuses. I pray that you would cause us to even experience a million dollar seed that we sow towards your work to do a great job of soul winning. Lord, I thank you that you would cause your people to receive and reap a hundredfold return a hundred million dollars and beyond. Thank you, Lord, for giving us big hearts. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thanks for praying with me. I'd like to lead you in Holy Communion right now. So I have the elements of communion on this pub table. And communion is a very special time in the life of the church. A very special time in the life of believers. If you've never before invited Jesus to be your Savior and your Lord, Holy Communion is meaningful for individuals who have had that unique experience. May I have the, the opportunity right now to lead you to Christ? Or if you're in a backslidden state, which is Bible language to mean you're away from God, I wanna lead you back to right relationship with the Lord. Pray with me this simple prayer, if that's you. Lord Jesus, save me. Wash away my sins. Be my Lord. Be my God. In fact, I pray this in your very name. Amen. I want you to follow the link on the screen, and it's going to take you to a point where you can be able to get connected with literature that'll, that'll anchor you and deepen your decision to walk with Jesus and help you grow as a new follower of Jesus. But let's continue with Holy Communion. The Bible is clear on this. Communion is a time where we recommit ourselves to following Christ. Would you take that which represents the bread? You may have a cracker, you may have a slice of bread, or you may have whatever, it may be away from where you are. It represents the body of our Lord which was given for you. And so before we take of communion, we always ask God to wash our hearts, to cleanse us from unrighteousness. So pray with me this prayer. Father God, cleanse me from unrighteousness that I'll always walk upright before you and before others. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you take of that which represents the body of our Lord given for you and let us eat together. The scripture says that when we drink of that which represents the blood of Jesus, it is a new covenant that we're acknowledging. The blood of Jesus was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And as often as we do this, we're doing this in remembrance of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior. Would you drink together with me that which represents the blood of Jesus? Lord, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for being a part of our time together today. May you have a very great week in Jesus. And remember, it's planting time.